Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn some important things about integrating quotations. Now this process can be a little bit complicated at times, so we're going to break it down and make it as simple as possible so that when it comes time for you to do this in your paper, you're not struggling to do it. Now you might have to come back to this video and review it as you integrate your quotations, and that's okay. So let's get started. First of all, you need to know what a signal phrase is. A signal phrase is something you're going to use in your sentence. It's basically giving credit to the author. So this goes within the sentence itself, and it uses the author's last name. Now you can use the author's first name and last name, but in an academic paper, you don't want to just use their first name. You want to use the last name that's a little more formal. So here are some examples of signal phrases that you might see. And when you'll notice in my examples here that we use the present tense argues, explains. So in MLA format, our signal phrases are parts of the sentence where we give credit to the author. We use the present tense and the author's last name. So signal phrases, a cool thing about them is that they can go anywhere in the sentence, really. You can put it at the beginning of the sentence, as we see here. You can put it in the middle of the sentence as we see here, and you can put it at the end of a sentence, as we see here. So there's some flexibility there. When it comes to integrating quotations, you need to use a signal phrase every time, because that gives the reader an idea of who is speaking. Now something else that I should say, if you go back to these examples here, you'll notice this 12 at the end of the quote. This is called an in-text citation. They tell you what page the information came from in Ying's article. So it's always important to include a page number if there are page numbers. If you're using a source from the web that doesn't have pages, you wouldn't include these page numbers. So here at the beginning, most of the sources we're using don't have page numbers. So there's a possibility that you won't have to include these. But you will still need to include your signal phrases because they tell you who said the information. So there's four main ways to integrate a quotation with a signal phrase. That's what we're going to go over next. Number one, you can use a short signal phrase with a comma. So like in this example, we have the signal phrase Ying explains and then a comma. Notice a few things here. The quote should start with a capital letter. So there's a capital T right here. If the quote already starts with a capital letter, as in this case, we don't have to change anything about this. We just leave it how it is. But sometimes you want to use a quote that doesn't start with a capital letter, or you want to start in the middle of the sentence. In that case, you're going to have to make some changes. If it starts with a lowercase letter, you can use brackets, as in this case. Notice here it's the same quote, but we're starting at this point in the quote. So all of a sudden we have a lowercase letter at the beginning of the quote. Well, we need to fix that. So we follow our rule here. We're going to use brackets to make this a capital S. After a comma, we always start a quote with a capital letter if it's following this format, signal phrase, comma, capital letter. Okay, so another way we can integrate a quote is to use a short signal phrase, and instead of using a comma, using the word that. So notice back here we had Ying explains, comma, in our next example, we use the same signal phrase, but we add the word that. And the that takes the place of the comma. Note there's no comma after the that. Ying explains that. And then the same quote following. In this case, because there's no comma, the quote needs to start with a lowercase letter. Now in, the, in our original quote back here, this is a capital letter starting the quote. So that's why we used brackets to make it a lowercase t. So we're going to lowercase the first letter of the quote using brackets if needed. Now on this subject, if it's a word that should be capitalized anyways, like the word I, or somebody's name, or a brand name, then you would leave it capital. This is only if it's not a proper noun or a name. If the quote starts with a lowercase letter, no change is needed. So if we needed to change it here, but sometimes you might not need to. As I said, if it starts with a capital letter, we need the brackets. So 
In this version, where we start halfway through the quote, notice that we don't have to use brackets because we're starting with a lowercase letter. So if we use the word that, we don't use a comma, we start the quote with a lowercase letter. Another way we can do this is to have a colon after an independent clause. And remember that an independent clause is going to be a complete idea. So these signal phrases here were not independent clauses. These are not complete ideas. But let's say we make a complete sentence before the quote. Ying has her own take on the matter. Instead of putting a comma here and creating a comma splice, we're going to use a colon. So if you have an independent clause as your signal phrase, use a colon. And this is a little weird, but if you have an independent clause and a colon, you're going to leave the capitalization however it was originally. So if it was capitalized, leave it capitalized. If it's lowercase, leave it lowercase. Not sure why that is, but that's the best I could find. Another thing we can do is mix the quotation into our sentence. So here we have, Ying is of the opinion that social media affects people's feelings about themselves in a multitude of ways, referring to harmful comparisons as a key issue. So here, these are the author's exact words, so we put quotation marks there. But the rest of this is the student's original words. So they're paraphrasing, they still need to have this signal phrase. But we put quotation marks around the author's exact words. And this is important, you always put quotation marks around the author's exact words. So those are the four ways to integrate quotes. You can use a short signal phrase and a comma. Go, there's the comma there, I added that. Short signal phrase and a comma, two variations. You could use a short signal phrase and the word that. You can use a colon after an independent clause, such as we have here. And just remember the capitalization. If there's a comma, you're going to use a lower uh, capital. If there's a comma, you're going to use a capital letter to start the quote. If there's the word that, you're going to use a lowercase letter. If there's a colon, you're going to leave it however it was. So those are your main four ways. Uh, or those were three ways. The fourth way is mix the quotation into the sentence, as we see here. So here we have a quotation with the words mixed in. We've quoted the author's exact words, and then the rest are paraphrased. So that tells you the main building blocks you need to integrate a quotation.